Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This is part two of a two-part video on fabricating a belt guard for an old air compressor. So here's a little quick summary of where, we are, where we're at. Last week I cut up the metal with a plasma cutter and uh, rolled some metal using some stuff that was just laying around the shop for the, uh, for the radius. And then we wound up here with everything all tacked up, ready to weld. This is the way I like an outside quarter joint. Uh, no gap and just a little overlap. Just And uh, that way you can weld it even without filler like this if you want. Just rolling the corners over, just using minimal heat. For most of this video, I used filler metal like this. 1 16th diameter ER70S2. And one of the reasons I was using filler metal, so a lot of times on a job like this, you just you can zip it up without any filler at all. But I thought I might, uh, I might grind off the welds smooth, blend them all off nice and clean and smooth. And if you do that and you don't have any filler, you wind up with hardly any, any cross-section at all holding things together. Plus it makes for a more interesting video. Well, I had some discussion on using ER70S6 for TIG. That's real common in MIG, but um, it's kind of hard to get as TIG wire. So I actually used a little bit of MIG wire here. Just to kind of see how that works out, and it's kind of small to feed in there. So I did. I ran out of one sixteenth uh, ER seventy S two today. So here's what here's what I do when I do that. This might be obvious to a lot of people. Might not be so obvious to some. But a lot of times you got leftover little runs of MIG wire that you coil up from stripping out a gun or whatever, and if you hang on to them, they can get you by in a pinch like this. So I'm just twisting some O thirty five wire up here. Actually, it may be O thirty. I don't know. I, don't really recall but anyway I'm just twisting it up real good and tight with a drill motor and an eye bolt chucked in the drill motor and chucking it up real good and tight and if you get it good and tight it, it, it really suffices really well for TIG wire in a pinch not something you'd want to have to do all the time got to be careful when you let it go because it's got a little spring on it but anyway you can snip that stuff it kind of straightens it out very easy to feed and if you twist it up good and tight, it doesn't come loose while you're while you're feeding it. So there's the obvious tip of the day. We're going to use that now. now ER70S6, the 6 indicates a much higher silicon content than 2 or 3. The higher the number, the higher the silicon content. And silicon is a deoxidizer that scavenges up uh, oxides and rust and a little bit of this and a little bit of that and floats it to the surface. So it can be a good idea. Now this is plasma cut uh, edges here and I ground them nice and clean but I didn't quite, obviously I didn't quite get all the dross out of it because you can see some floating around in the puddle as I weld. But it, it, it did pretty well. And the wire twisted up there, you see, is just about like uh, using a 1 16th diameter wire, so it really does come in handy if you run out of 1 16th filler metal. This is just another angle right here. Odd angle, but it's mainly, mainly so I can get the camera shot in there. Feeding the wire from a little bit weird angle, too. Sometimes you just have to do that, but I didn't have to here. I just did it so I could try to get a decent shot. Hard to get good shielding on something like this on an outside corner joint, and um, a big cup would be required if you're really concerned about color, like on stainless steel or anything like that. Today I'm using this, you know, welding this cold rolled steel, is so I'm not concerned about color at all. This thing's going to be blasted and painted before it goes on the air compressor. So mainly, I'm just kind of concerned about getting it done and getting moving on to a job that actually pays some money. So after I got it to this point, it's pretty much all done, all welded up. Did a little bit of a uh, little bit of blending on it here and there. Now it's time to cut the expanded metal, and this is coming in really handy for me. This is the cutting table, the downdraft cutting table I built several months ago. And I built this pull-out uh, handle on here. Probably need some braces on it too, but I'm not put, not planning on ever putting anything very heavy on there. Just for sticks of angle iron, square tubing. In this case, some expanded metal that's a little bit too big to to manage on the, uh, you know, to get a cut on it, but this lets me prop it up and, and support it and then lay it out and uh, work with it, so pretty handy. Just clamping a straight edge to the expanded metal. 
get a straight piece cut off of that first. I have to maneuver it around because the cutting table is not quite big enough. And then I'm just using the inside as a straight edge because I want a little slop in it anyway. I don't want to have to drive it in there. I want some room to fit in there nice and just really easily. And then just going around putting a little quick spot tacks. And the MIG is definitely the way to go for that. Now you might notice, I've stopped it here, you might notice my trigger is on the uh, reverse side. Have you ever set your gun down and... Um, just carelessly and then looked around got busy for a second then heard something crackle or pop and then looked around and saw you had 20 feet of red hot wire on the floor where it had grounded off to something well I have done that and that is why I moved the trigger to the other side and I haven't done it since I really like it better this way it was just a simple matter of of uh, taking the gun body apart and swiveling it around and so uh, it, I, I really like it a whole lot better now I'm, I'm sure not every gun can uh, can do that but that's that little Hobart 210 MVP, and uh, I like it better with the trigger backwards. So I've got a, I've got to actually weld a little pad on here because I won't be able to get fingers up in there to get nuts on the back side. So what I'm doing here is I'm, uh, I'm going to actually uh, weld a little pad with some studs on it, make it a whole lot easier to put on rather than try to fish a, a big extension up in there. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to puddle weld these little uh, bolts on there and then cut the heads off of them and I'll be welding that onto the compressor body. I tried to get a little shot of welding that but it didn't work out too good so you get the drift. So once the uh, once those studs are on there and I've got it figured out where I want it, get it tacked and then weld it onto the compressor body and then some more pads tacked where I'm going to put mounting brackets and I'm just using a piece of welding wire here to support the top and get a little twist on it and uh, get it kind of held where I need it so I can get tack welds on the little mounting brackets. And once I've got all that done, there they are. Looks kind of weird, but I got three attach points. And I'm going to take it over to the Master Blaster, this uh, mother of all blast cabinets here. My friend that, that, that uh, owns the machine shop doesn't do anything small, so it is a big mother. That's that's the that's the uh, belt guard all done with the top mounting point attached there with one bolt to, uh, to one of those little lugs on the cylinder head, and then I got two on the bottom. It's all painted up and ready to go. Probably not OSHA compliant. Gonna have to put another finer mesh thing on the inside of there one day soon. But anyway, thanks for watching. Visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.